So we shot it over five years, so the cameras evolved as technology evolves, of course. So we started out with 5Ds and 7Ds and, um, you know, kind of worked our way up to other cameras. But um, um, in terms of music, I have worked with a composer before, Bobby Johnston, and I worked with him again on this, and I would say about 60 to 70 percent of the music in the movie is, is original score for the movie. Um, and then we also license the music and then there's the Garth Trinidad guest DJ segment that's interspersed through the movie that, you know, I felt that was important to get in there some way to really show Jonathan's kind of breadth of knowledge about music and his appreciation for it. And, and so we worked with KCRW and Garth to film that and, and kind of work, work to sort of, you know, weave that into the movie to sort of show his evolution as a music critic. And it, the editing took over a year. So it was, it, was a, it was a tricky film to structure and put together and find, since there's a lot of, you know, Jonathan's writing and, and B-roll shots, it took a long time to kind of sculpt that and find the right shots. Drones. Um, and some we, had drums. we had the drones. <laughs> we had incredible it, drone it, artists, it, Jerry it, Henry. If I've been profiled before, Dana Ginter did a piece for The New Yorker where there was a sort of, we went out a lot and the sort of thing where there's this, you know, we're driving back from someplace far in the San Gabriel Valley and it's, she's not talking and, and as a reporter it's like, wait a second, is this a companionable silence or is she trying to get me to crack? <laughs> But Laura is much more gentle than that. I think over the course of it, we may have been to, what, 50 or 60 places. I mean, a lot of places. And I think you ended up, at the end, choosing not necessarily the ones most important to me, though there were a lot of those, but the ones that sort of like pushed, this, pushed the story forward. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, it, it wasn't like, oh, I want one Southern Thai restaurant and I want one, you know, it was, it was, it, it was a combination of trying to hit different places, but also picking the best footage and the best scenes and how it sort of fit into the structure of the movie and the story. So it's a combination of factors, probably. The, I think there's four New York restaurants in there, too. There's a lot of New York restaurants for a movie about L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I was the restaurant critic for Gourmet Magazine for four years. You know, I, I'm, like a lot of us, I miss Gourmet a lot. Good to of Lucky Peach. Um, and I found that I, I love being a Gourmet and I love everybody I was with and I loved writing about, you know, that top tier of restaurants, but I got tired of describing the amusements of rich people. <laughs> I mean, rich people eat really good food, make, you know, they, there's no doubt about that, but the instead of having like a, a thousand cultural contexts, it was one cultural context. And I, I realized coming back here and doing this would be something else, but you know, Robert Seisman's been doing such a terrific job covering pretty much the same thing. And you know, God bless Robert Seisman. I think that Jonathan is part of, of the conversation in, in Food About New York, both from its legacy at Gourmet and the standard at which he sets and the kind of, I don't know, when I, when I reviewed restaurants, there was always, I felt like I was outside of it, but there was always a, a, a seats of gold volley going on of one-upsmanship about who could find, you know, uh, an ethnicity who had never appeared in an English language newspaper and write about their cuisine in an authoritative and intimidating fashion. And ultimately, I think the diversity of Los Angeles, you know, is, you know, helped Jonathan win out in that, and you know, the the perversity with which he, you know, kind of focuses in on understanding like that Nanjing duck thing. I've, I've talked with him extensively about the the process that went into understanding and not enjoying that dish, and it's just a level of dedication that that most people won't bring to it, and the the. Like the Taiwanese restaurant that you went to that 17 times, he didn't like the restaurant and he doesn't <laughs> like the food, but he went there enough times so that he could understand it. And I think that as when when I started writing, it was like you, I read Gold's writing and it was like, okay, this is the the standard to set. And I think that you know there's a lot of things that people say about the way that the internet has influenced food writing, but I think one of the things that it's made it 
easy to do is, is keep up on what Jonathan's doing, and I think that means more people are reading it, and I think it helps breed a, a better, uh, has helped breed a, a, a breed a better generation of restaurant criticism, because people are keeping up on what, you know, and, and then everybody gets to try to compete. But Los Angeles is probably the best eating city in America, and it is so diverse and it is so gigantic that it's, you know, <laughs> Sorry, I've lived here for like 20 years. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just jealous and it's just true And also it's the worst part is that I go to Los Angeles and I ride around in that truck with this guy So my view is totally biased before I knew Jonathan I like ate in Hollywood and I was like your rich people's restaurants are not as good as our rich people's yeah. restaurants That is definitively true, but rich people's restaurants are not as interesting as not rich people's restaurants And that's where they beat us so but I think that LA may be, in a lot of ways, um, more segregated or more insular. I mean, here everybody, t everybody takes the subway. Everybody walks the same streets. If you're, you know, you could be a Korean guy with a restaurant way out on Northern Boulevard, you know, you know, far out of the reach of the subway. But you still are, you still have some idea of what an American customer wants when when he or she walks into the restaurant. Whereas in LA, they just don't care. Um, because they're, because they're self-contained communities yeah. and, and, and the, the geography allows that to happen. Whereas in New York, we all live so close together that we are constantly crisscrossing and, and intersecting. So I don't think that New York is, I think New York is less segregated, um, but it's just, it, but it, the, you know, like when they did that, cool thing on the map in the movie where they showed the, all the different city centers, you know, getting darker and growing and overlapping. Those are all independent, those are communities that, that are opening restaurants to feed themselves. And I think that's the thing you get in, in LA and also like that, that stuff about the, 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 when the immigration happened there and how long it's been going on. There's multiple generations of restaurant owners as where a lot of the ethnic, you know, Utterboro cuisine in New York is like first wave and it's people cooking to feed themselves at like a working class rate. So I think that you see second and third generation restaurants in Los Angeles in a way that we don't really have in a, in a lot of communities around New York. Yeah, and in obviously there's a lot of stuff there here that's totally the exception to that. I mean, I don't think the place serving the food of Kyrgyzstan is like, really expecting that people from Forest Hills are gonna like cruise over for what do they eat in Kyrgyzstan? I guess you're gonna have to ask Sitsma about that. Yeah, Sitsma is kind of the central uh, Central Asian specialist of the, the three of us. Um, yeah. But 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 in terms of I mean also I guess one other thing to say is that saying that the food in Los yeah. Angeles is better is kind of a funny thing you say to piss people off. But <laughs> it's not it, I mean it, the eating I think is better there, but it's it's contrary to, I think, the whole message of the movie and what Jonathan writes about to look at things in terms of bestness and worstness, and it's more about approaching things in their own context. Yeah. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to back away from saying that the food is yeah. in Los Angeles clearly yeah. eating there better. No, no, believe me, when I, when I compile the first uh, best 50 restaurants in America for Gourmet Magazine, I realized at some point that if I was going to tell the absolute 100% truth, uh, 42 of them would have been in Manhattan. Um, it did, the list didn't come out that way, but people would have killed us. Uh, time for one or two questions, yes. What did you eat today? <laughs> this is probably the worst answer that yeah. I could have possibly oh, <laughs> Should I cover for you? <laughs> sure. I don't even know. I oh, can't get in front of this bus for you. I... I I, I ate in the bar at 11 Madison Park. <laughs> I mean, you it were on Rich Guy Island, so, you know. We had a Fino Sherry at Don Quixote down the block, or El Quixote down the block earlier, though, so it's keeping it a little bit realer. 